here we go. Welcome, 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 welcome to day one of the Golden Hour Masterclass. Listen, I am pumped, and y'all know how we're going to do it. I need to see some excitement in the chat, so put your favorite emoji, how we feeling, you know, talk back to me. I want to make sure that we good and we in the right place. I am excited about tonight. So what we got, let me see where we are. I see the people on, and I need y'all to talk back to me now. Y'all know I got that black preacher in me, so I need, I need to make sure. You know that the audience is tracking with me in this virtual world. Come on, groovy evenings. Come on, Shane. Talk to me nice. That's how I know we we where we need to be. Good groovy evening. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yes. And we are excited here. And you know, we don't waste a lot of time here on the golden hour because we really want to be able to understand where we need to be, but also to really give you some things that you can execute right away out of your life right now. That when you click off on this evening, you can say, you know something, I can do that right now. Yep, right now. So let me just say to everybody, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, and there's going to be some benefits of being in the building. Let me just say that. There are benefits to being in the building. And as Shane says, you're going to feel real groovy because you're in the building. That's all I'm saying. There's going to be some benefits from being in the building. So here's what we got, good people. Here's what we're getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to go ahead and get after it because I don't want to waste your time. You all are here. And we want to get started. Now, one of the things that, whether you've been jumping on Get Over the Hump, you got a chance to watch me and Kurt on Sundays, is that we've been talking about how do we transform our mindsets to put ourselves in a position to go achieve and to accomplish everything that's before us. And when we talk about how do we do that, how do we make that happen? There's certain things and nuances in life that don't make it easy for us to get there. It might be some bumps in the road, some stumbles, some ups and some downs. It puts us in a position where we got a question like, yo, like what's going on? So I want you all as we we do, we're we going to make this participatory is that put in the chat, what gets in the way of you really being able to move forward with what it is that you know you're supposed to do? Move forward on that thing that you know you're supposed to make happen. I just want us to talk to each other real quick this evening as we get ready to move this thing forward because it is time for us to be able to normalize our situation, but to move past where we are. So as we are getting ready to get started, I want us to be able to think through what is it that is keeping us in this cycle that doesn't allow for us to move, that doesn't allow for us to be at our best, doesn't allow for us to, to be in the spaces and the places what, that we desire to be. What is that thing? So let me look at the chat. Yep. Procrastination and fear. I see it. Yep. Yep. Oh, Natasha, you right on time. You ain't got to apologize. I see you eat your fear. Yep, life be life in the distractions. Come on, we're going to talk. We're talking nice and we're talking honest. That's what it is. We're going to talk honest and we're we going to be real, you know, that it's the distractions. It's the procrastination. It's the fear. It's all of these different elements here that allow for us to be set up to stay in this cycle, to stay in this spin, to stay in a place where we're trying to figure out how do we break this because I actually don't like being where I am. How do I get myself out of what I'm in? And one of the things we have to realize is sometimes you're not qualified to talk to yourself. I just want to make sure that we clear. Sometimes you need somebody else. That's why the chat is going to be beautiful tonight. That's why as we walk through some of the stuff that we're going to walk through tonight, it's going to be beneficial because it's going to be new information that you're going to insert into your life that you can apply that allows for you to get the result that you've always wanted, but didn't know how to get. Yeah, I know it. You want to take everything on yourself and I want to be, be private and I want to get it done. But there are moments where you need some help. And I shout out to everybody who jumped on because you said tonight, I need a little bit of help. You could have been doing anything else, but I need a little bit of help tonight to actually help me continue to keep moving in the direction that I know I need to be moving in. All right, so let me share my screen and let's get to it. Boom. All right, so let's get ready to get this thing started. We're going to start it from the start. So we're talking about day one. Day one of the Golden Hour Masterclass. It is answering this whisper. And some of y'all trying to figure out what is this whisper? Yep, this whisper, you know, in, in Christian, in, in the Christian faith, might call it the Holy Spirit, but there's some urging, there's some pushing in your spirit 
in your heart that you've been trying to just dumb down and make ambient noise in the background. You're trying to just make it white noise and say, eh, it's okay. And you're trying to find ways to be comfortable and be content. And that's where the procrastination comes in. That's where the fear starts coming in. That's where the, the distractions of life come in, where you say, well, since that was happening anyway, I might as well focus my attention over here. Because anytime that we have a distraction, it takes our resources, it takes our attention out from where we're supposed to be focused or locked in on, and it allows for it to go in other places where our best is not on our best. But we want to talk tonight about answering the whisper. And the thing I love about the whisper is that the whisper is the small voice, the communication that only you can hear. It's not something loud for everybody to hear. It's not something broadcast on a PA system. No, this whisper is meant for you and only you to hear. So you can keep ignoring it or you can be annoyed by it or you can answer it. And some of us have been annoyed by it. Some of us have been trying to ignore it. Hopefully tonight we answer it, all right? Now, what is this whisper? Yeah, this whisper is this feeling in your heart that there is something more than what you have been experiencing. There, there's this nudge, this is this push, and it has two parts to it. It has two parts. It has this call to action. And it's calling you to do something different than what you've done. It's asking you to be better than you've been. It's asking for, it's requesting, at times demanding for you to make a sacrifice that you haven't made. Oh, it's that thing that's right there that's saying, you know what you're supposed to do. Why are you not doing it? You know this actually works when you do it. Why are we not doing it? It is that call to action. It is that no longer am I thinking through this. No longer am I trying to perfect this. This is the call to action. And for it to be a whisper, it feels very loud. For it to be a whisper, it feels like somebody's yelling at you. Because the more you try to ignore it, the more you try to dismiss it, the more you try to just get used to it, it seems to get louder. Yeah, that's the whisper. It's your call to action. Now, with this call to action, it's not just calling, have a, a call to action just to have a call to action. It's calling you to a greater purpose. And that's sometimes why it's annoying because you know it's calling you to something greater than the moment that you're currently in. You know it. And because you know it's calling you to something greater than the moment that you're in, you're going, but I don't know if I want, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I want to do that. Why do I need something greater? Where I'm at has actually been pretty cool. My family, my, my, I'm doing better than my parents. I'm doing better than most of the people in my friend circle. Why do I need to do something different? Because your whisper, your message is calling you to it. So we talked about it earlier. What keeps us from answering that whisper? Procrastination, fear, distractions. And everything feels like a relevant excuse. But here's what I know, is that a reason that we spend too much time on becomes an excuse to create the comfort to justify where we are. I, I don't want us to miss that. Because see, some of us, have put ourselves in a position where the reasons have become excuses. And when the moment that a reason becomes an excuse, you become uncomfortable, you become comfortable. But if you look at a reason in a short period of time, it gives you the fuel to move forward. And when you look at a reason, this is legitimate on what happened. It actually doesn't allow for you to be okay with where you are. It fuels you to move in spite of. So don't allow for the fear that's attached to the excuse to make you feel comfortable. Because at some point, the comfort is going to feel uncomfortable because the whisper is annoying you, you can't ignore it anymore, and it's calling you to more than you know that you're supposed to have. Okay, if we we doing all right, I just want to make sure we all right. I know I'm, I'm coming in here kind of heavy right now, but I want to make sure we're doing okay so far. You know, so y'all can talk back to me in the chat. Let me know. So now this whisper, what is it pushing us towards? It's pushing us towards this golden hour moment. 
It's pushing us to this space and this place and this time in our lives where we have to understand that it's a very critical moment. And this critical moment that we're in, we don't need nothing else. So for all my people that feel like you need to, you know, I, I, let me let me just pay this off and I'll be okay. Let me go ahead and, and get this certification, I'll be okay. Let me take this next course, I'll be all right. You don't need nothing else. When the photographers take pictures of subjects or they do this on videos or movies and they use the golden hour as a backdrop, they all know that nothing else needs to be added to that moment. Nothing else. And I'm saying to you right now, nothing needs to be added to this moment of your life. Nothing. The only thing I, I want to hopefully compel to you right now is for you to be able to see right now in your life that there are two things that are happening. There are two things that are happening. One, it is the setting of the old and the familiar. You can keep trying as much as you want to to hold on to the past, but it's actually being ripped out of your hands. You can try as much as you want to to keep holding on to that old relationship, but you're frustrated because they don't want nothing to do with you no more. It is the setting of a season. It is the setting of a moment. It is the the, the the sun going down on the things that you've been used to. Because as, as the sun goes down on what you're used to, we know that based on the sun going up and down, the day going to night, that when the sun comes up, it is the arising or the dawning of a new day. Now we sing this song in church, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Every day we get a chance. And in, in church, they sing it, they're excited. But when you and your life get another chance to let go of the familiar and go into a new day of grace or a new season in your life, fear kicks in. Procrastination happens. We blame stuff on distractions. And when we begin to do that, now what's beginning to rise, we don't take advantage of. And some of you all are tired of the things rising and setting and you're still in the same place. Some of you are tired of the sun going up and coming back down and you have not made any progress. That's the whisper saying, we can't keep doing this another year. We can't do this another day. We can't do this for another moment because the time in which we need to move ourselves forward is right now. We can't do it any longer. We can't sit back any longer. And the other part about the golden hour, when they talk about it, when it comes to obstetrics and gynecology, it's the critical time between when a baby is born and when the mother and the baby bond. It is that first hour. They call it the golden hour. So this golden hour space that we're in right now is about what's setting, what's rising and why it feels so urgent and critical. You know it. And I just want you in your notes to start right now. What is the most critical thing that I know in my life right now? What thing is so urgent that I can't let it go? That I've been ignoring this whisper for so long that now I need to lean into it because I can feel the urgency. Something is happening. I can't even explain it, but I feel like it's going to be something new. The same way I wake up in my day and I might know that I'm going to work or I might have these plans. I still don't know what the day entails for me, but I'm excited about what's before me. That's how I feel in my life right now. That's how I feel about this next step of the journey that I'm on is that I'm excited, but I'm un but it's an unknown. But I'm willing to let this thing set in order for the newness to rise. So here's what I want to help us with. The one thing that I appreciate about my guy, Kurt, is we got a chance to start playing with some, some concepts. And as we were toying with some concepts and being able to help over the last few weeks, this thing came up. And I, and I wanted to make sure that we get a little deeper into it right now, because I believe that this will unlock for some of us why we have not been able to move 
in the thing that's rising in our life and not let go of the thing that's setting. It's because there is this tension between clarity and certainty. <clears throat> what we do understand, if you've ever stood and you took a picture in a sunset or sunrise, you know that that thing is beautiful. If we don't know nothing else, it is clear. It, the clarity, the beauty of that moment is unmatched. It is not debatable. And there was a level of clarity that you have in your life right now, in this space, in this moment, that you probably have never experienced. And this clarity is allowing for you to actually try to turn that whisper up a little bit. It's making you be a little bit more encouraged that you, you're doing some things different, but you're still not moving before, because for you, the clarity isn't enough. You're looking for certainty. But what I want you to understand is to answer the whisper, is to move in this golden hour moment of your life. You don't need certainty. You need clarity. Because the beauty thing about the beautiful thing about clarity is it asks you to do what you know until you get something else to do. Let me say that again. Clarity gives you the urging to do what you know until there's something else for you to do. And many of you want to figure out what to do next before you've done what's been asked of you. If it's fitness, what's been asked of you is to go get the membership. What's been asked of you is to go grocery shopping different. But how am I going to meal prep? My schedule's already crazy. Which gym am I going to go to? Did nobody ask you that? The clarity that you have is that you need to have the membership, need to start grocery shopping better to be able to start on this path, which is clear that I need better health in this situation. But some of us are still stuck. And there's this anxiety that's raising in your spirit that you might miss this critical moment because you're waiting for certainty when all you need to answer the whisper is clarity. That's all you need. So go do what you know to do now until you get instructions on what to do later. It is that simple. We can put this in the Bible. God told Abraham to go, Abram to go to a land far off and he was showing to him where he was going to be there. He gave him clarity of the direction, didn't give him clarity, didn't give him certainty of the location. Yep. When Peter got off the boat, he was clear that it was God, that was Jesus that was calling him onto the water. But he wasn't certain on how he was going to get there. But through his clarity, when he had the command to come, he got out and he went. Some of you all are asking way too many questions. And the more questions you keep asking, the more time that keeps going by, that you will get the certainty that you desire when you move in the clarity that's been asked of you. I'll say it again. You will get the certainty that you desire when you move in the clarity that's been asked of you. Okay, come on. I want to make sure we all right. How we doing here in the chat? Let me pull this chat up real quick. So let me look. Let me see what we're talking about. Okay, I see where we at. Okay, okay. All right, we in here. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure y'all tracking with me. I just want to leave me out here by myself. Just want to make sure we all right. Okay. All right. Now talk back to me a little bit. All right. So let's 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 go to the next slide. Now, the thing that we have to make sure that we're we're clear on is that this whisper is the voice of possibility. Yeah. It's when we shape our perspective. We talk about this on Get Over the Hump all the time, is we begin to see possibilities instead of problems. We get a chance to see opportunities instead of obstacles. But this gnawing, this annoyance of this sound that can't just be turned down, is coming, if we're honest, at a very inopportune time. And sometimes an inopportune time is because you don't want to do nothing. You want to stay in the past. Yep. You don't want to be present to figure out what's actually going on. What have I learned to be in this space? 
And Lord knows you don't want to go into the future. It's like, hey, it's too much. I'm trying to get my bearings going right now. So let me wait a little bit longer. Let me check a couple more boxes. But when we look at the voice of possibility, it's actually giving you the understanding that it's validating your resume. That whisper that's pushing and urging you, almost bullying you into your purpose, it knows your resume. It knows exactly who you are. Flaws and all. Yep, Moses, you got all them excuses, sir. I'm gonna need you to still go. Yep, you murdered somebody. Yep, you a stutterer. You've been hiding out. Yes, you still need to go. I know your resume. And because it knows your resume, it understands its present moment that for you and those that are attached to you, it is critical for you to get moving. So this present time isn't something that's going to keep coming back around. You know it. That's why you're doing something different. That's why you want to be around different types of people because in your brain, you're going, I don't know what to do, but if I'm around the right people who are trying to do the same thing, I'm going to figure it out at some point. And the last thing, the future that you've been praying for, the future that you've been believing about, that possibility has only been a vision in your mind. You're sitting back saying, this actually might be possible. I actually might be able to. And that future possibility messes with you a little bit because now you begin to go in your spirit and say, who do I think I am to be able to walk into that? Let me say to you, who are you, are, who, who are you to think that you can't walk into that? What have you done so much that you think that you're not worthy of the thing that's before you? Your past has justified you for this moment. And this moment is pushing you into your future. But you got to lean into the whisper. You got to lean into the thing that's actually urging you to be in the space that you need to be that will transform everything around you. It's the voice of possibility. It is the voice that says that there's more. It is the voice that says, I didn't bring you this far to let you be this far. No. So when we talk about answering this whisper in this critical moment of our lives, as things are arising, this is why it won't let you go. It knows your resume, it understands the moment, and it knows where you're going. So here's probably going to be the hardest part. One of the simplest things to do but it's probably going to be one of the hardest things for you to do. It's letting go. Yeah. It's letting go. And many of you want to have the carefreeness of the, the image that's on this slide. You want to be able to have the carefree perspective of being able to say, it's no big deal. I can let it go. But the issue with letting things go is that cognitively it's simple but emotionally it's hard. Let me say that again. You understand the concept of letting go. Cognitively it's simple, but emotionally it's hard. Why? Because that means you got relationships. That means somebody ain't going to be with you when you turn around. That means the way you saw this play out in your head that when I got here, when I looked left and when I looked right, it was going to be somebody with me. And when you get there, that person ain't going to be with you. It's the relationships. Yep, it's the memories. It's the pictures that bring to instantly take me back to that space. Why can't I have that? It is the, the memories that though sometimes I don't necessarily like it, I still can see the benefit from it. And I, I want to hold on to that because I know who I am with that. Or then you got, it's the thoughts. They, they still keep creeping in. I know I'm supposed to let go, but I know I'm supposed to do this, but I know I'm supposed to. And every time we put a but in the middle of the sentence, just like when I used to butt my mama, it usually going to get you in trouble. Because the but in the as a conjunction of that sentence nullifies everything that's before it. This is my moment, but. I know I'm meant for, but. I'm better than this, but. So what happens is we keep starting back over and having to retrain our beliefs because we haven't let go. So when we think about the relationships and the people that we thought were supposed to be with us. 
Maybe you had BFF on the left and BFF on the right. But have you thought about the possibility that maybe they not supposed to go because they gonna actually pull you down? And the people that stand on your left and stand on your right in that picture, in that moment, whose faces you don't know are going to be the people that hold your arms up, are going to be the people that's going to support you in a way that you've never been supported. The people that are going to see you in a way that's going to refresh and ignite your heart and your spirit. Have you thought about that possibility? Or are you only saying that I only want to win if these people are in the picture? That's the possibility. Memories. So do you think that the memories that you have are the only memories that, only memories that you can have? Do you think that the memories that you have are the only memories that you can have? Do you feel like your life has stopped? I didn't think we were reading an obituary about how you live. So why not continue to live? Because as you continue to live, you get a chance to produce more memories. You get a chance to erase the bad ones, write new ones. You get a chance to do more than what you've done before that allows for this thing to be ignited in your heart and your spirit. And when we talk about the thoughts, how about we begin to see things as partly sunny as opposed to partly cloudy? As opposed to saying, it took me so long to get here, how about we say, I'm so glad to be here? Man, I wish I would have known back then, I'm so glad that I know now. So now we begin to open up our thinking, open up the possibilities that now is our time. This golden hour is critical because something is rising as something is setting. And I want to make sure that I'm free of baggage as I move into my future and letting go of the relationship, letting go of the memories, and letting go of the th thinking. I don't want anything holding me back from this time right here. So here's how we do. We got to embrace the unknown. Yep, it's going to be a little foggy. It's not going to be as clear as the past was. So as we embrace the unknown, we got to believe that this new day is happening. Many of us just experience a new day, new day at work, new day with our family, new day with your kids. And though you kind of knew what to expect, it was something you had never experienced before. We got to embrace that. Because though the unknown is unsettling, it also is the only space that actually you're going to find growth. <laughs> Don't miss that. Though the unknown is unsettling, it is the only place you find growth. You do not grow in the, in the comfortable. You do not grow in the familiar. I can tell you this. One of the things that my mother was very uh, emphatic about um, is she made sure that her kids had a vocabulary. There was no, we going to the stove, you know, let me close the door. It was none of that. It was pushing us very early, enunciate your words. So even in that, all of us have vocabularies. So we'll use words in places and spaces that people are like, yo, what was that? But there were moments in order to get the vocabulary in which it just comes out for the three of us now, where we had to go look in the dictionary. We had to use context clues. That certain conversations were uncomfortable for us because our vocabulary hadn't grown. But it, unless we embrace the unknown, uh, the unfamiliar space in language, we don't have the vocabularies that people give us credit for. It is the only place that you grow is in the unfamiliar. Only place. It's the place where you actually figure out how to leave your boundaries up and people not violate them. It's the unknown at some point is why you probably make more money on this job than you made on the last one. It's the unknown where you grow. And when you understand it's in, in the unknown is where you grow, now we embrace the new day. Here's one thing I love about this image that's on the, on the screen. Is that if you've ever had to drive through fog, fog can actually make you think that the whole world looks like that. Before it burns off in the morning or before you drive, that you sitting there like, man, I can't see nothing. You got your high beams on, you're trying to figure everything out. And then all of a sudden, as you keep driving, you keep moving into uncertainty. You don't have clarity, 
but you're going to get the certainty as you keep driving. When you get on the other side of the fog, it looks like nothing else was ever there. I just need you to drive through the fog. I need you to walk through the fog because the thing that you're certain of is the direction. The thing that you're clear, clear on is where you're going. How you going to get there? And what happens along the way, you might be unclear on, but the clarity to move in a direction, you got it. And I just want you to know that if you keep going, that if you embrace this moment, you lean into this whisper with the possibilities that are before you, when you get to the other side of the fog, it's going to be clear and a beautiful, bright new day. So here we go. Here we go. Moving forward. It's the place in which we have to let go of the old so we can move with clarity. Understanding that the clarity produces the certainty. And with certainty, you can answer the whisper and move forward. It's letting go, clarity, certainty, answer the whisper. That's what we want to talk about tonight and today is how do we answer the whisper? It's those four things. Use what you got. You got clarity. And understand what you have will produce what you desire. And what you desire is the certainty. And when you get the certainty, all of a sudden, what was once annoying, what was once uh, you tried to ignore, now begins to be the key that unlocks your purpose, unlocks your destiny as you walk through what was always meant before you. Listen, come on, let's light up the chat. Let me know that we did all right. Um, let me know that this was okay because I want to make sure that we got a chance to put ourselves in a position to make sure that we can understand all of what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Let me look at this chat real quick. Yeah, I see you, Shane. Your destination is not for everybody. Mm, time to go look at real estate. Thanks for clarity. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to come off, uh, somebody wants to come off, I'll, before we get to some of the other stuff and I'll let us get out of here, I just want to know, um, what are some of your thoughts from this? You know, what are we, what are we processing and thinking through right now? You know, I know I just hit y'all with eight slides of a lot. You know, so I want to hear what what are we thinking through? What are we talking about? And let me do this because if they're not here, they don't need to. Hold on, let me pause. So, um, listen, make sure that you do not miss day two. Um, if this was good, and y'all say I'm gonna bring somebody with me, this was worth the time that I invested out of my day for day one, put some fire, put, put some fire, put some ladders in the chat. Just let me know that th I didn't waste your time tonight. I just want to make sure that I didn't waste your time, that this was worth what you needed in this moment right now, because we not done. We not just, we just don't have day one. We got a day two. Yep. We got a day two. So it's in the chat. Go ahead and register, hold your spot. But my ask is, if it was good for you, man, don't keep this to yourself. Bring somebody with you. Tell them you got to come. Be a little pushy. Be a little insistent. Bring them with you. Because we got to get there. We got to get there. And we got only get there together. So bring somebody with you tomorrow night. That's all I ask. Bring somebody with you. Um, now, in that, those in the room, in the building, you already know what it is. We got October the 4th and the 5th. We got v -Ross. And so I was talking to the team. And one of the things, you know, my mother would tell you, I've always been pretty generous as a kid. It's a gift from God. So I want to keep this same spirit of generosity going right now. So, um, Sam, you and Tara just signed up for the Guardian Experience. And with you all signing up for the Guardian experience, after talking to the team, we believe, sir, that it's time to upgrade you to the Legend experience. You and Tom have now been upgraded to the Legend experience. So 
Sam, check your email, sir, because Isha is going to reach out. We need some information because that legend experience ain't a random experience. We being super intentional on that. We had conversation mm -hmm. Sunday on what we're curating. So Isha is going to reach out to you via email with the information she needs to make sure you and Tara come into the legend. Welcome to the legend circle. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so yes, much. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's awesome. You are so very welcome. Oh, you have such a lovely voice. I look forward to meeting you. Yep. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, okay. Generosity doesn't stop. So, my legends, the folks that said, you know, son, we believed early. We jumping in. It's what it is. Talk to the team. I said, what can we do for them? So, since we are going to Washington, D.C., that in 1963, Dr. King declared on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, I have a dream. And because of his impact on humanity, it's one of the reasons why I chose D.C., but also with the team, we are taking a visit to the MLK Memorial the night before to really allow for inspiration, equipping for us to embrace this moment in a way we've never embraced it before. Legends who are already legends today, I'm inviting y'all to come join us. Y'all can come be with the team. We are excited about this experience to get you even behind the curtain on how we prepare for this curated experience, this transformative event. Um, we invite you all with us. Now, I know some of y'all got some scheduling stuff. You're doing good to be there with us. I said that wasn't cool to just give y'all the op option to come join us and more details on that is going to come. But there's also, and, and the team had to remind me because sometimes I normalize my greatness because I'm too close to it. So I undervalue it. Here's the thing for everybody who was a legend before that was a legend before tonight, I'm giving two one-on-one sessions uh, post VROS for us to be able to specifically customize your coaching, your strategy to take what you learn in those two days and go take it to the next level. Yep, two. Two sessions with yours truly. You got them. All we're going to do is after we get done in D.C., we're going to process through, we'll come up with a game plan specifically for you, do some follow-up, and we off to the races. Come on. I just, I just want to make sure that y'all understand and hear my heart that I'm serious about this thing. And I want everybody to understand that they get an opportunity to be able to be better than they ever thought they could be, to be surrounded by people they only thought they had to have this and have that to be around. That's you all. That's you all. And I want y'all, and I want people to be around this group. Um, now you can go tell some folks saying, man, I don't know about that V-Ross. Here's the other thing we rolling out. My, my last bit of generosity. Well, not last bit, but for tonight. As you can tell people, if they sign up between tonight and midnight Saturday, whatever they sign up for, it's an automatic upgrade barring spaces available. The only one doesn't get automatically upgraded is the Legends because them spaces are running out. But if they buy a hero ticket, they get a guardian ticket. If they buy a guardian ticket, I put them on the waiting list to figure out if they get to if they can join the Legends. But I'm telling y'all, I want to make sure that people get a chance to have the next level upgrade by taking action right now. Walking through the fog because they have clarity that they're supposed to be at October the 4th and the 5th in Washington, D.C. to be at VROS. All I want to do is make sure that they understand that we're there, we're excited, and we believe in their transformation. So go tell your friends. Go tell your family members. Go tell, you, go tell the people who had all the excuses on why they couldn't make it. From now until midnight on Saturday, if they sign up, automatic upgrade. Heroes become guardians. Guardians hit the wait list, and I'll see what spaces we have for the legends. And if somebody signs up for the legend, they automatically are going to get those two coaching sessions and an opportunity to be with the team. I just want you to just take a chance and let's go. All right? Listen, I absolutely love y'all. Uh, I am pumped about what we're doing. I'm pumped about day two. Uh, I'm pumped about our opportunity to come back tomorrow 
and to be better than we were, to get more information that will equip and inspire us to do exactly what we need to do moving forward. So tell your friends, let's pack this room out. Let's see if we can double this number tomorrow night. See if we can double it. See if we can do plus some what we already got. Because the more people we get around you all in this fire and this energy, the more we got a chance to be able to watch people October the 4th and the 5th walk into a room one way and walk out transform, transform forever because now they know they are meant to turn the world upside down, leave the world a better place in which they found it. And that will be because of you all and how we move together. This is a movement. VROS is a movement. This community will be looked upon and they'll say, I know each, I know what they did at this moment in time when our world needed it. And that's you. Thank y'all. I will see you all tomorrow night at seven.